Hey, this is Peggy with Easy Peasy Premiere Plus Ultra software for the embroidery machines. And I am doing a review for the boot camp that I just held on Saturday. And we're going to be talking about font options and creating your own fonts. I've done other videos using Premiere Plus software on the fonts, but this is going to cover something a little bit different towards the end. And I just opened up my Premiere Plus, and I'm going to go into the lettering tab. And I'm going to just type something in the size. If I say I would like two inches, I'm going to put the two and then the shift bar and the quotation mark. And that will tell me what two inches is, 51 millimeters. Basically, one inch is about 25 millimeters. Um, I'm going to set the gap. The gap is the space between letters. And you can go with a large gap. And that's going to put a pretty good space between the lettering. Or you can also go with a negative gap and the negative and a six let me do this again negative six and let's see what that does so notice how the a and the r are really close together now they're almost running into each other okay so that's what gap is you can also do that I want it to be a hundred percent of the width of the screen or whatever there. Here are your shapes and remember there is a drop down menu. This one right here allows you to stretch your letters um, up and down and um, so that they're not in a straight line. If you click on the reverse, it does a, a, it takes the entire sentence and puts it in reverse. So if I start on the right, on the left with Dogs Are Fun, um, it would come and start with the, on the right with Dogs Are Fun. So we're going from left to right and all the letters would be reversed also. Um, and the other thing, on here would be individual letters. I'm going to turn my font size back to a 25. And if I'm going to check the individual letters, um, alignment is left justified, centered, or um, <coughs> right justified stitch type sometimes right now the lettering is a pattern fill sometimes you have choices there and we're going to hit apply and goodness they are all run in together because i left the negative gap on there but just because i'm going to take because i used the free sculpt i can take and do each letter individually and stretch them out. So that's kind of fun. And I can go back now and do a box select and select all those letters. And then I can group them all together again and I can go to properties. Nope, that's not what I wanted. I was thinking I could, um, <clears throat> I was thinking that I could take them all and um, put some spacing between them or whatever. But that is not the case because we are doing the letters as individuals. Okay, so.
Um, last thing I wanted to show you here, though, and I'm going to get rid of this, at least put it down here, and I'm going to go back into the lettering tab, and I'm going to use those same letters. I'm going to set my gap at zero, and I am going to hit see how they are all run together at zero and I'm going to do a properties that was not oh I know what I did never mind I have to do this one not the individual letters I think that's what I'm up to and I'm gonna put some gap into it An individual is still <clears throat> checked and I want to get rid of that so we're gonna to go to apply spacing is there again and I'm going to look at the properties actually I'm going to look at pattern fill Here's where I can set my type of pattern fill. So say I want this one instead of the one I had. Or I can pick a completely different one. And here's where I can change the colors and the density. Right now it's a density of two. And that's fine and I'm going to change the colors in this so we're gonna go into the gradient I'm actually gonna add a marker also these are the markers so I'm gonna start out with this color and I'm going to click on the second marker and I'm gonna pick another color I'm going to do brown and then I'm going to do a really dark brown and these markers can be moved around and also these upper markers can be moved and then I'm gonna say okay and that's what I get which is kind of cool so I think I've gone over pretty much most of the fonts that a lot of you already know um, I can do one more thing here I'm gonna put the R fun on the second line and I'm going to choose this right here the full circle I can take and shrink things down by grabbing the green dot I can also slide the green dot to the right or left to get a different effect so maybe I want to move those dogs are fun closer together farther apart and each one of those green dots controls a line okay so there is that and I'm gonna get rid of everything that's on the screen and now I'm gonna go into the font manager font manager will allow you to take a font you can do a search for a specific size font if you needed to do a small oh, luggage tag or something and you want really small lettering you can say I want lettering that is five millimeter up to maybe seven millimeter and it will give you lettering 
that is 5 millimeter plus or minus 7 millimeters. Okay, so you're looking at the smaller number. Yes, it'll go up to 25, but it also has the um, the range in the, the first number, and that's what we're looking for there. Okay, so you can set the fonts. The other thing that we covered was the quick font. So, it is going to work with all of the fonts that are on your computer already. And there are lots of fonts out there on the internet that you can get for free and put them in your Windows font folder. And I'm going to pick Cooper Black. Actually, I'm going to go down here and do engravers. Okay, so once you've picked a font you want to use, you have choices here. You can do regular, you can do bold, you can do italic or bold italic. And because I'm going to make this into a lettering, I am going to use the bold so that this little line right here is a little bit thicker. And you can tell it that you want to use it in your Premiere Plus 2 embroidery system, or you can use it on your embroidery machine. You can actually put it on a USB stick so that if you have a Topaz or um, other type machine that only has a few fonts on the machine, you and you don't have software um, because this this does come with a in a free version um, so say you don't have the software and you have a topaz you can download this free, free software and it is in the my sonnet um, group now um, so if you download my sonnet the free version it is there um, and you can make these fonts and you can put them and load them on your embroidery machine. But I am going to use the Premiere Plus 2 software system. And I'm going to say next. And we have options here. You can do a satin stitch. You can, and it shows what the stitch is going to look like. You could also, um, anytime there's options, you want to go in and see what those options are. This was the width of the satin stitch. You can choose pattern fill. And again, your options are going to allow you to pick whatever pattern fill you would like to do. And then you have a pattern fill with a satin border. So you can see on here there is a red border. And I can take my border stitch and say I want this to be a 3 with a density of 5 and it gives me a little thicker border. And again, it's allowing me to do the stitch options in the pattern fills. You can do just a satin border. You can do, that's the width of the border. You can make it into an applique. So that gray would be fabric and you'd be cutting around the, the applique and then doing a border and you can do an outline. I like to use outline stitches sometimes um, and then in uh, Precise Create in the Create module um, do some motif fills and things like that. 
right here is your output range. So for if you scroll over, it will tell you that the minimum would be 25 and the maximum is 200. Right now I have it set the minimum is 50 and the maximum is 120. But say I wanted to do a sweatshirt, I can put 200 millimeters there and those letters would be 200 millimeters tall, which would be just the right size for a um, sweatshirt that is applique. Okay, and then your joining points would be your baseline, your nearest point, or continuous. And we're going to put it here. Let's see. I'm going to go back. So I did engravers MT. You need to know the name of the font before you actually save it. And it did come up here, so we're good. And I'm going to say engravers MT. And then I'm going to say I d saved it at, one, at 200 millimeters. So I'm going to put 200 millimeters there to, so that I know that that is a really big letter. You can do a print catalog. I've never used that. And if you want to make a whole set of them with different sizes and different choices, you would say return to make another font when I finish. So we say finish. And it just saved it. And now I can go back and say next. And I can say I want it appliqued at um, 120. So 80 to 120. So now we're going to say Eighty to one twenty, and I'm going to unclick it because I'm not going to go through the full set. So now, when I go into my font tab, this thing on the side and I don't know how to get rid of it. So we are going to go to the font tab and over on the left we're going to see my fonts and there are my fonts I just did. And if I click on them, I can say dogs are fun. It's going to be 80, so I'm only going to do one word. Oops. I probably did not want to do... something that big and, and in the circle. So... I'm going to get rid of it and I'm going to choose just the word dogs and you can see it's still too big for my the size hoop I'm using and I'm going to go down here and zoom to full screen again and my hoop is a size 260 by 200 so I would have to bump that up to a 360 by 200 possibly and it's still just a little bit too big and I can scooch it in here just a little bit probably and hopefully it will work otherwise I can go back and I can make that font just a little bit smaller using the quick 
font on font manager. Okay, so that is what we covered on the class today. I'm going to close this and I'm going to end